<laughs> yeah. You already know. I was, yo, I was laughing before before we even did it, man. Just thinking about doing it, bro. Man, Facts. unbelievable, dog. Hey, what's 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 Facts. going on, Facts. everyone? Facts. Good morning, man. You know what day it is. It's Wednesday. It's 10 a.m. You, you kicking it with us for an hour. We got a uh, we got a few games to talk about, Joe. Um, but before we hop into that, what's been good, man? You know, it's it's been a week. You know, since we chopped it up. You know, let the audience know what's been going on, man. Well, we back. Uh, we we're back playing games. We got back from break. Uh, you know, we we played two games this week. Went zero and two, but some progress is being made and that we could all be proud of. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, so it, it is about the progress. we got a young team and I'm um, thinking about the future. I'm real optimistic, you know, that some of the things that are finally there, it's clicking and it's coming together. So, you know, I've just been back on the Grizzly practice workouts back in my everyday routine, which is good, you know, but the only thing about it is back in the routine means less time at home, which means less time with my baby girl. So, and the fam, and you know, that's, that's, that's the, that's the part of coaching or about having a career that people don't really talk about or really touch on, um, is the fact that you're away from home a shit ton, you know what I mean? And, uh, it, it could get to you if you're that, if you're invested in your family and you really, you know, care like emotionally sometimes, you know, it can get to you. So, um, no just doubt. getting back into the groove of things and being happy to be back at work, but obviously missing the fam, them early mornings and coming back late nights. I'm not seeing enough of them. You know what I mean? So, but I'm back. I'm blessed. I'm healthy. So are the kids and the family. That's all you can ask for. You know what I mean? What you've been doing? Oh man, bro, you 100 percent though. We we just try to find as much balance as we can from, you know, the the coaching or the career to you know to the family life. And at the end of the day, the most important thing is the fam. You know, being able to be there yes, for the kids and, and and wifey and all that. So, but you got to provide too. It's tough, bro. It's it's a lot of things that I don't. Uh, it's a hell of a control, dynamic. I know. Man, a hell of a dynamic. And I, I tell you what, I know we get caught up in it sometimes, but we just gotta. We got to do the best that we can, man. You know what I'm saying? That's all That's we can it. do. Control what we can control, That's man. Had, had, had those pure intentions. Exactly. Looking at some vacation dates, too, potentially. You know what I mean? Just for uh, when everything is done, season is over, and you could, you know, take a little break. Looking to bathe in some sun, a little salt uh, water. You know what I mean? That's salt water. Great for you. So, it, looking forward to that. <laughs> Hey, bro, I'm looking forward to getting some sun. I need, I had a tan. I'm pale as shit right now. I'm looking at myself <laughs> in the screen. But, uh, but no, nah, bro, I mean, it's, I've been kicking it, bro. I've been, you know, doing a lot of stuff on the ED23 hoop side. We, uh, you know, this whole month of January, we've had our little hoopers uh, program going on every Wednesday. So we have it tonight. It's, uh, you know, 530 to 630. And then we have another group, 630 to 730. Uh, shout out to all the ED23 hoops coaches. Uh, they've been holding it down, man. It, at, you know, each session we have at least, you know, six to eight coaches, uh, you know, helping out the kids. And, you know, a lot of it, Joe, is just introduction. Like the kid, he don't even know if he like it or not. You know what I mean? Mom, yeah. dad put him in it and, and just kind of giving him that experience. on the wrong foot, all type of shit. Man, man, bro, so it's a <laughs> it's, it's an eye-opening experience for, I mean, I, obviously we've been in it, but, uh, you know, I learn more each time. And I know the coaches are, uh, you know, learning more every time and, and uh, getting accustomed to working with the kids. Because that's that, that oh, age. Yeah. You know, a key word is patience. Patience, <laughs> <laughs> patience. like, hey, bro, I'll tell you what, that's, I mean, that'll, you'll figure yourself out a lot dealing with like kids at that age, just, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. trying to teach and explain. And, you know, it's, uh, it's an experience, man. So, and, and then they besides that, that way, uh, talking, yeah, you gotta have you man, gotta be listen, patient with and, and a patient and, you got to bring that energy, man. Like you, you got to be yeah. able to keep them engaged somehow. Like, it, of course they're going to go keep off. It fun. Keep it fun. Keep it fun. You know, you exactly keep it fun so they could stay engaged and, and, uh, hopefully from there they kind of, you know, get an interest in it or whatever. And, uh, you know, kind of take it on their own. But, uh, but yeah, bro, that and, and, uh, That's AU, I got AU tryouts coming up for my teams, my girls and boys, um, girls are at the end of, this month and then we have the first weekend is the boys so it's 10 u 12 u 14 and then 16 slash 17 u so when does the agency start april 
Yeah, April. So we we'll, we have the tryouts early, and then we'll get into practice in you know mid February, yeah. end of February, so they can have some time to, you know, what I'm saying, get together and do all that. So so parents, gotcha. if you're watching, if your cousins or uncles or aunties or sisters or they got kids and, and they're within that age range, ed23hoops.com. You, you go there, you register for the tryouts. If you don't want to register online, you could come and walk in. But I suggest that you go check that out on, on the website and, uh, you know, look at all the information and details you need to see and, and, and check it out. See if you want to come and bring your children, man. That's we, we, we'd love for 100%. you to have, be a part of the fam, man. You know what I mean? ED23 Hoops family, baby. Come on now. Come, each one, take come, one. Come get you. Come get your game right, man. Come for real. Come get your game right. And I'm talking to you like that too. That's it, 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 Joe. You, we've done multiple camps together. You know how we talk. Yep. Come on. <laughs> we, we, we speak it real. And I, and I hope I, I hope we could get back together and do one soon, bro. Just to be honest, oh, for sure. That, yeah, that'll be great. You know what I'm saying? Just a nice little refresher <laughs> at some point. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, because kids, kids, get, you get to experience that. Coach Joe, Coach E, look, man, I'm just telling you, we we bring a whole nother level to you. No, nah, that thing that doing those camps with those kids, and then they come back to the next one. You might hear a parent say, "My daughter wanted to come back because she had such a great time and she really loved you guys." And did it. I'm like, you know, you, you touch a lot of, you know, what I mean, you, you, you obviously now you provoke something in them where they're like, "I really enjoy basketball," but also you give them an enjoyable experience. They're going to want to come back to that. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't too hard. You see how it is at camps where we do it for a weekend or three days. And the first day, everybody's kind of got their little clicks going. By the end of, you know, by day two, now everybody's talking, communicating. By the end of the camp, they sick that it's over. They're like, oh, we need another three days. You know what I mean? So it's, it's dope, man, <laughs> to, to, to get in there and meet all the kids, all the different personalities. You know what I'm saying? I miss it for sure. Some good kids came through that camp, man. Kids giving away uh, NBA NBA cards and all type of stuff, like as as gifts and stuff like that. To, <laughs> hey, appreciate you. That's a fact. Hey, man, you got so, you got that sun glistening on you. I need some of that sun, bro. Come on, man. You got. I mean, it's, it's, it's cold as shit, it's though. Sunny, it's sunny. Cold as shit. But look, that sun. <laughs> You need it. You need it. It's cold, bro. It's cold. But I will say this: it's not snowing as much as it usually would around this time, bro. Like we we got real snowfall for the first time, like probably a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. So that's that's great for Montreal. It makes the winter feel a little less long. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now it's only minimal snow. It's not it's not hard to travel and get around. No slush and all that type weird shit around. So I'm not complaining. Just cold I'll as shit, and it's going and it's going to stay like that. Hey, Joe, I got I got a question <laughs> for you, man. So, and and, and I, I bring this question up because you know we'll go into uh, the North Carolina game where obviously they got punished. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. then we'll talk about last yeah. night's game where they I thought was awesome for them to go on the road, and especially after a loss like that against North Carolina and losing exactly. in that type of fashion. But have you ever been of a been a part of a game where? You lose by 30, 30 plus, or, or you a game where you just like, man, it's just it, the, the effort wasn't there. You never, that wasn't y'all. You know what I mean? I don't think y'all have for real. I don't, I don't think no. you have that I have, bro. What game I was have. that? I want to fucking say that it was, it could have been Seton Hall, bro. Like we got destroyed at the dome. I need what a fact year? check. I want to say it was yeah, uh, old nine, that, Jordan. Um, but I want to say we lost by like 30, bro. Like, and it was, it was <clears throat> outside of that Lemoyne loss that same year. Could have been my junior too, but that, that Lemoyne loss was devastating, but we only lost by a couple points, but it was the fact that it was, what was it? Ninety four sixty two. Damn, that was a fucking yeah. It was it was bad. It was bad, and uh, I remember just feeling Seton like Hall? total shit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was Seton Hall. Oh okay. uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I believe it was Seton Hall. They had uh, Cabby. What's the name? Uh, J uh, J uh, Jeremy Hazel. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, Jordan uh, Theodore, they had, you know, they had Jeff Robinson. They had a good little team, but obviously not 30 points better than us. But that was one of them times where, you know, we're, we're feeling ourselves. Like, you know what I'm saying? We've been 
running through the the, 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 the conference and all that stuff. And at, at that point, Seton Hall probably wasn't – obviously every team is tough, but we go into certain games thinking we're, we'll be all right. And they came out ready. The dome effect didn't work on them at all. They were making every shot. And, bro, it was just a, during the game, it was one of those things where no matter what we do, you know, when you're down 30 and you go on a 10-0 run, you're still down 20. And it's just like, fuck, bro, we can't, we can't, we can't get out of this shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What and team was that? What year, though? Oh, oh, that, oh, nine, oh, 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 09. Yep. That was a tough-ass team. I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure, bro. I don't want to say that was my sophomore year. So, um... Like, or was it my junior? One of them two years. I know we got punched by by Seton Hall. Well, what we happened that next game check. then? When y'all came back, I though, wanted, like what happened play, that I next think, game? Who did we play? I think we played DePaul the next game, if I'm not mistaken. Could, could be very mistaken, but I know the next game we, we definitely won. And it's the bounce back, especially knowing when you don't play up to your potential and you're like, damn, we just made a mockery of ourselves. Like we came out here and got our ass whooped at home on top of that. You know what I'm saying? In front of our home crowd. Um... It was disappointing, and everybody knows we had, each individually had to look at ourselves in the mirror and be like, "Yo, we gotta be better than this, bro. We can't, we can't allow this shit to happen." And I don't think I ever lost, obviously, nearly by that much points again. But yeah, we went out there and we won the next game for sure. Just that mindset has to switch. Okay, we need to get back on on the right track immediately because that shit can't linger. Because you know, a loss could turn into two, turn into four. So yes. we had to make sure that we we get up out of there quick and uh, win our next game. Seton Hall, yeah, so, I mean, 2011. So my junior year, my okay. junior year. Seton Hall, 2000. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, you you see what these young boys just you know we talk about the, the last Saturday, January 13th, they went into Chapel Hill and you know they lost 103 to 67, and mm-hmm. then obviously last night they come back you know on the road three days later against a solid Pittsburgh team. It, it seems this year we got Pittsburgh's number. They haven't played good against us in either game, but. Uh, shot the ball well at all, but you know, regardless of that, on the road, ACC, sixty-nine, fifty-eight, win by tough test, win by double digits. My whole thing is, bro, for a team, this team is like a you know, sophomores, a lot of sophomores. There's really, you know, put Benny in the junior, but as far as playing experience, a young team, right? And again, I don't want to make an excuse, but that's just the reality of it. It is what it is. You need to be able yeah. to get that game experience to see see growth as a team and. And that's that's what we're seeing. But I think for them to come in against Pittsburgh on the road after a loss against like thirty plus thirty six, whatever it was, and, and and really in a game where the effort wasn't there at all, you know what I'm saying? Against the North Carolina, just just wasn't there. You didn't feel that energy. It was it was like, oh man, is this a game where you know we're taking a step back? That's that was kind of the feel. But t- to be able to come out on the road last night against Pittsburgh and really, bro well balanced like i think it was almost eight guys scored the basketball 10 10 10 yeah. guys played i mean you got we talked about that wing position with with um chris bell and, and justin taylor they provided a spark you know what i mean if i think if they can provide that three-point shoot and i said it last night with steve on post game we're a totally different different team just how they're spacing the floor offensively giving us you know wider driving lanes for jj and judah yeah no question uh, you know guys to get downhill so I mean, I just think yesterday was a, a, you know, obviously we have to bring the consistency, but the balance and being able to take care of the basketball, it, you know, we've been getting reba- out rebounded every single game, but the margin last night was, you know, it was four or five rebounds, which is whatever. If we're shooting the ball well and we're taking care of it, you know, I mean, I, I think we'll yeah. deal with the, you know, getting out rebounded exactly. by four or five, but I, I just like what these young guys brought after a big time loss and in and, and, and the toughness and the grit and then shout out to Copeland and, and those guys for you know they got in the little tussle in the middle and they stood up man they did they stood mm-hmm. up for themselves you know what I'm saying I'm not saying get out of get out of pocket with it but man listen this is basketball you got to be tough you got to bring that grit you got to bring that competitiveness and I'm seeing it from you that's, what, yeah, that's and, what it's all and, about it, it, Joe I said it before before I let you go I, uh, I said it yesterday last night Ever since Copeland really been playing how he's been playing, he changed it up for everybody on the team. I'm, I'm saying as far as his energy and his 100%. effort and his toughness, I can see it going to everybody else a little mm-hmm. bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, mm-hmm. he's a game changer, bro. And, like, he doesn't 100%. have to uh, make an impact on the game just by scoring. He, he does it in so many ways just with his energy. And that's, that's a special guy right there, man. And you, you could just tell how he, how he carries himself and how his approach, his approach is – 
is uh, how it needs to be for for a guy with a, who wants to be a big time player. No question. I was actually compare, not comparing one of our players to QC, but just showing him. And, you know, because a lot of guys on, you know, my McGill team, they want to know about the American experience, so to speak, and how was it at Syracuse and how. So we're always talking and comparing the NCAA and certain leagues, whatever it is. And there's a player that comes off the bench and just explain to him, like, look, since we always talk about Syracuse, take QC, for example, like he comes into the game and he's a winner. Like winning doesn't mean you have to score. Winning means you have to do whatever it takes necessary to win a game, whether that's give energy, rebound, pass, defend, and he comes in the game and he has an impact. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I was trying to explain to him, don't worry about starting. Don't worry about minutes. Don't worry about none of that stuff. Make sure that when you get into the game, one, you're ready from beforehand. So make sure you're getting your work in, shots, whatever it may be, lifting. But when that opportunity does come where you get in the game, you got to impact it in a certain way, like, get a pressure the ball 94 feet or go ahead and get you four rebounds to assist generate points for your team uplift everybody and that's what he does bro the whole time his energy is top notch his energy is on 100 the whole game you can see him on the bench anytime someone scores he's the first one up he's doing all the celebrations on the court you can see him talking shit to the opposing team just like you said bringing that out of everybody bro and i think that that if he can continue to do to do that which i'm sure he will we'll be all right you know and and he'll be at the Q's Hopefully for, for another couple of years, he's going to be a big piece in what's to come in, in uh, the basketball future at Syracuse University. Love what yeah, he's agreed doing. Agreed 100%. 100 percent i think if he you know he shows he's he's capable of knocking down the jump shot but if he gets a little bit more consistent with that man listen he can get by anybody six seven he got vision he's long yep. he's lanky i think on the defensive side of the ball he's better than people a lot of people give him credit for i mean i don't no think question. he's a bad defender but being that long and athletic dude he can move and guard but the thing is, is bro, he is willing to play defense you could tell where no doubt he's like he's he's all right, cool. This is my matchup right away. I'm on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, he makes it difficult. Yeah, or he facts. tries his best to make it difficult. He doesn't give you no room to – nah, he's pressuring you. You could, you're going to feel his presence. You know what I mean? And that's what you need, bro. And and I and I think for him as well, like, he's realizing that this is what gets me in the game and what keeps me in the game. Like, and this is easy to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, this comes natural, so I'm going to just keep doing it. And it's working out for him. Every game he's been a contributor – you know what I mean? Like whether it's, you know, that eight points, he's hitting the three, getting assists, rebounds, some stuff that don't show up on the stat sheet. He's around, bro. Deflections. You got to love his energy. And, and bro, you know he from Philly, motherfucker. You, just know, <laughs> you, 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 you could just tell, man, right when you, you – I mean, you see the chops. You know what I mean? And then, you, you know, and then when you hear him talk, it's just, I mean, you're Philly. And, and, bro, I mean, we've been around a lot of Philly dudes. A lot of Philly guys have come through and, and, and you know, played at Q's. Gritty. And, and one, gritty, tough. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, that's that's a Philly cat right there. Like, you know, he, yeah. he, he ready to go. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if he on your team, you know, you, you, you're probably going to be happy about that. If he, if he not on your team. All right, like you know, what I mean? you you yeah. you gonna have to deal with it, but but like you can tell, like he he, he got that Philly mentality. He's he's a go getter. He tough. He gritty. And, and bro, I'm telling you, we need that. I mean, if you a basketball a, a good basketball team or want to be a great basketball team, you need guys who just bring that toughness, man. If you could get it one through five, you probably can't. But if you could get guys who could just bring that type of impact to a team, man, like a, a guy like Copeland, I'm telling you now, and, and going to guys like uh, J.J. Starling, who, and just by his personality, he's not like that. He's not mm -hmm. like Copeland. He's not, he, he's not, you know what I'm saying? We've seen him get excited, but he's more of a, he, he's more of a, a, a laid back dude. But for Copeland to come in and, and bring that energy, now it might rub off on my man JJ a little bit, and we seen last night. You know he was getting into his bag. You know creating off the drill for good. himself, off seventeen points. Really? Joe, he's a guy that needs to be ten plus shots a game. We we said that like he got to be aggressive because every time he he plays well and he's aggressive, it seems like we win the game. Yeah. Just to be honest, like you, you and, and we got we got to go out with you, like whatever, bro. We rocking with you. So if you missing or making. We need you to be aggressive. You got to be assertive, mm -hmm. man. Like that's just mm -hmm. that's just how you got to play. And, and and I mean, tell me right or wrong, Joe. What's your take on that? Like just going forward with him, like, like 
10 plus shots a game. He has to be getting to the free throw line. He has to be able to create for himself and, and just be that confident player that he should, that he can be. We know he could be. Yeah. No, and, I, and looking at him last night against Pitt on the road, making tough shots, he had the little spin off the one foot. Like he was making some tough shots, right? And that's because now you, you're, you're feeling yourself. You've been hitting, you hit a three, you hitting pull up jump shots, you, you know what I'm saying, take your man off the dribble. So I think that his game, his confidence is growing within the system. Like we said earlier, or in, even when Griff was on the show, he had said, you know, it takes time for that chemistry to build and that synergy to be where we need it to be. And I think it's really happening at this point. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's understanding the importance of, I need to be aggressive. Like if he could come out and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to make the same shots every game going forward. But the fact that he was taking them comfortably with confidence, that's the biggest thing for me. Those shots look like I, I, I'm getting to my spot. I'm pulling up. This is what I want to do. 100%. The defense, can't, the defense is not going to dictate, you know what I'm saying, what I'm going to do with the basketball. I'm putting the pressure on the defense, and I'm raising up. And he was knocking it down. The, the jumper looked pretty, too, so the shoulder must be feeling real good. You know what I mean? Yeah, Shout out to, right. to the to the to Kabilis and the the, the the medical staff over there, probably working with him and Shout all that G-Mac. stuff. But G Mac, exactly. Shout out G Mac. You know, working with him. I'm sure every day tirelessly, but it's looking good. And just just to give us that consistent second guy that we need. You know, we we know Judah. Although he shot, what was he three for thirteen? He's gonna get to the free throw line. He's gonna find a way to put numbers on the board. Now we need. JJ certified too, and then everybody else. If C Bell can give us ten, QC coming off the bench, he's going to give us what he gives us. Malik last night didn't score the ball very well. He took one shot, but typically he'll give us, you know, eight, ten points, some rebounds. Like, but we need JJ. He's to another guy like in. Copeland, Joe. Like he, he does yeah. his impact is beyond the scoring, beyond the box exactly. score. Like he was, you exactly. know what I mean? He's that type of guy. So once JJ figures that out, which I'm sure they've been, you know, putting a battery in his back and letting him know that this is what he can do. And the more he sees it, the more he goes back and watches video and understands who he is and understands his spot, his spots on the floor where he can get busy at. It's going to start clicking and we'll be straight just to really have that one two punch that we've been waiting for on a consistent basis. Yeah, we've seen it. We, we've seen it against Georgetown. We, we've seen it in a few games. You know, even last night, I mean, the 17 and 13, but I think them just being aggressive opens it up for, for everyone else because now when they're aggressive, you really got to focus on these dudes. You know what I'm saying? They're going to mm-hmm. cause a lot of confusion for the defense and a lot of attention the defense is going to put on them. So, it you know, it helps other guys, man. And speaking of yeah, his backcourt, boys, be, boys better be ready to shoot. And be ready. That we'll get to that in a second, bro, because you already know that's what they got to be ready to do. It, we'll, we'll talk about his backcourt mate, JJ, is talking about Judah. I mean, even though he didn't shoot the ball well last night, three for 13, he's always putting pressure on the defense. He's always getting downhill. He got, you know, seven for eight from the line. But mm-hmm. besides all that, nine rebounds, five assists, I think a couple steals, three turnovers. But the best floor game that he's probably played this year as far as getting everyone involved, getting people to their spots, getting downhill, finding the open shooters. You know, we saw we talked about uh, earlier Bell and, and, and JT, and we'll talk a little bit more about them and, and how they need to be able to be consistent with what they did last night. But I thought Judah last night, man, just his floor game overall, he was getting guys. Involved. And, bro, we know you can shoot the ball. We know you can get by your guy anytime you need to, you know what I'm saying, and, and score, right? But get your guys into it. Get them engaged. Mm-hmm. Get them going. And then when it's time, when you really need to do it, Go ahead, get get to where you need to get. You know what I'm saying? And now I, I think for him, just doing that early on, now he gets used to not only his teammates being confident, but him being confident in his teammates. Like, man, okay, I don't got to do this all the time. I could I could get it to him. He's going to knock it down for me. He's going he gonna to make it right. Decision. He got to get that trust, man. But, but last night, I thought besides the shooting, man, really good floor game and – you know, yeah. he's, uh, you know, progression in, as far as that goes. That understanding that teams are going to start building a wall for this because they know he's getting downhill and they know like shit, it's, it's going to be nightmares to guard him one-on-one. We obviously know it's a team game and, you know, usually coaches preach guard your yard and make sure you stay in front. You're the primary to fight, whatever to help, help defense is like a backup plan, like guard your, you're not guarding Judah one-on-one. Let's just be real. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's going to get past you. You're going to get in foul trouble. You'll be sad sitting on the bench. Like, you need help defense. You need your help defense. But now what you talk about is floor game, just recognizing that, okay, there's going to be a collapse. And just being cerebral in the game and knowing 
the, where the collapses are coming from, where the help is coming from, who could be, who could I, you know, orchestrate and be like, listen, see Bell, get to that right corner. I'm going downhill. Fool, your man's coming to help. I'm going to find you a corner for that corner three or whatever the case may be. And that's what he has to continue doing, just making sure that he knows a wall is being created. A lot of attention is being put on him. I'm sure that he's at the top of the top of the scout report, right? So knowing that going forward, you're going to get your points. Everybody knows you can score. Unlock that second part of your game where you can get your teammates involved and get everybody else better. Because at the end of the day, bro, if he want to be an NBA guy, that's what he's going to have to do anyway. You, we, you, you know you can score, but you're going to have to facilitate and run a team. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. unless you want some, you know, you, you, your athletic ability on some D-Rose touch, that ain't it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. That's, yeah. a, yeah, that's, a, that's a whole nother level right there. So you got to be able to get in there, make reads, make decisions, get, get guys in their spot. And, and going off to what you were saying, uh, you know, I think just being able to communicate too, like tell guy, hey man, this your guy, he, he gonna help off when I get by. Drift to the corner so I can kick it to you. Knock it down. Now, now you drift to the corner. That that corner guy helped off. Now he got a long closeout. Now you got options. Now you got either the, the go all the way or you got the pump in, in into your one dribble. So it's just that communication is gonna create that, uh, I guess, camaraderie even more so. Just when you confident in each other. He got it, man. Like, he just got to yeah. bring it to the table. You know what I'm saying? Each each in every single game. But I think yesterday, too, bro, we talked about the balance. It's it's more so the others showed up. You know what I mean? We Cuff, he played 10 Benny. minutes, 2 for 5. Benny, 20 minutes, 3 for 4. You know, we talked about Copeland. He, you know, he played 27 minutes. Malik, he didn't score much, but he's going to bring everything else as far as on the defensive end, you know, moving without the ball, just being in the right spot. But two guys that I really want to talk about it, bro. And and I think Chris Bell might have got hurt or something because he played really good in the first half. He was the guy that kind of, you know, kept him going in, in the first half and knocking down some shots, some three pointers, and some pull ups. He had ten points in the in the first half and only played two in the second. So I don't really know. It worked out, but I don't really know what happened there. Uh, and then Justin Taylor, eighteen minutes, two for four. He had you know six points, two big threes. Uh, and, and then he had five rebounds. So he's he's always been pretty consistent about, um, you know, rebounding the ball. But, Joe, I mean, those guys are your position. Like, you were one of the best, uh, you know, wing players to come through Syracuse in a long time. It, it talk about versatile, shoot the ball, put it on the deck, athletic, get out and transition, guard, multiple positions. I mean, w what do those guys need to do to, to be able to bring this every single game and be consistent? Like, what is the mindset? Because it's – they get in the time, you know what I'm saying? I, I just think, you know, a lot of times these guys, you know, may be pulling away because they, they miss a few shots or a few things go mm -hmm. wrong, but more so Justin than Chris. But if we get these two guys, bro, to be consistent in it, whether it's together or individually, you know, really bring an impact on that floor and, and be able to shoot the ball, dog, different team, man. Different, different team. Yeah, no bro. question. No question. What I see, what I see is just – Getting that balance in your game, you know what I'm saying? A lot of three, and I know today's landscape of the game is shooting a lot of threes. You know, there's sometimes where I see JT and it might be his shot. Maybe he's capable of making these shots, but some shots I think they're, I don't want to call them out of character because I don't know what is, you know, what he's fully capable of, what he works on when he's in the gym. I have no idea, but my biggest thing is for both of those guys is make sure you're mixing it up. If you're not hitting those shots, I'm not saying, you know, they usually say, you know, you got to shoot yourself out of a slump. I'm in the belief of I'm not hitting nothing. Let me go to the basket one time. Let me get something easy. You know what I'm saying? Outside of uh, transition baskets, I can't remember if a time where, you know, uh, Bell really got the ball, rip baseline, gets to the basket, gets fouled, and those type of situations. He's always ripping to a pull-up, relying heavily on jump shooting. And his, he has a great jump shot and great jump shooting with both those guys. But I think being able to mix it up, be a three-level scorer, be a three-level threat, get to the free throw line, you know, get on them boards, Get your offensive rebound or two. Get yourself something easy to get yourself going. You know, at some points, like getting a free throw, no defense. It's just you and the hoop. It's going to, you know, you're going to see the ball going to the rim, get your rhythm going. I think that's the biggest thing is don't settle for so many threes. Um, mix the game up. When you're when it's not falling, you got to be able to fall back on something else. Have a have a backup. You got to be able to have counters for your counter. And guys know they're playing you to shoot the three ball now. So what's the next step is, okay, maybe I got a pump fake. Now I got to put the ball on the floor, and that's something they got to keep working on. Put the ball on the floor, be ready for the help side defense, change direction, get to the basket, right? And they're both athletic enough to get to the basket in one or two dribbles. It's just a matter of now mixing it up, and I feel like um, 
balancing it out. You know, I, I, I love playing in the mid post. I know coaches to run a little baseline um, cross screen for me to get it on the, on the, in the mid post where I could face up me seven Special. feet away from the basket. I'm, I'm feeling all right about that. Me and my defender, I'm going to UConn, Jeremy Lamb or whoever it may be, Austin free. I'm, I'm five feet away from the basket. I'm cool with that. I'm going to rip, spin. I'm going to get to the basket. I'm going to mix it up, keep the defense guessing. It's easy to guard someone who does one thing really well. Now, when you can do multiple things really well, it, it becomes difficult for a defense to really know how to guard you. You know what I mean? Find multiple ways to get yourself to the free throw line. I was really good at, you know, when the defender had his hand right there in the cookie jar, ripping through, getting a foul, a cheap foul called on him, getting myself to the free throw line. It's just understanding your game and knowing, um, you know, how to get to what you want to get to. I need, I need some free throws right now. Scoop. I need to get to the block. Boom. Communicate with your point guard what you need. Get on the block. I'm right there next to the basket. I'm going to try to go get me a, ba- a foul or something, get to the basket. And I think that's what it is, having that balance, especially at our position, um, being a wing. You want to be able to do a little bit of everything. You know what I mean? And, and do a little bit of everything very well. You know, you could be excellent at something, but you got to do a lot of things very well to be a, a pretty good player at, at this level. Yeah, that's a fact, man. And I'll tell you what, it's it's not Chris Joseph out there. You know, no disrespect to my guy, JT, and Chris Bell, but uh, you you, you are a different type of player. But I I do think they they have to be able to mix it up for themselves, right? Like like right now during the season, can you really improve that much? I mean, you could definitely improve, but that's what the the summertime grind is going to be for for both of y'all. You you need it. You know what I'm saying? We need to be working on those one, two dribble pull-ups. You know, maybe uh, uh, keep it simple, rip. You know, if you got a sidestep or make a move to a counter and be able to get in the finish, you got to do it. But I I think right now they got to be consistent, being aggressive and and, and not letting guys – or, or letting shots or letting turnovers, you know, make them be hesitant <laughs> in, in, in play. So I'm laughing how at many, the question. My fault. <laughs> no, let me see. How many offensive plays did you got? <laughs> Look, I'm going to tell you this right now. We had the guys where he could be like, go ahead. Like, that's, yeah. that's the type of guys we had. I mean, you had one or two play where you'd go, it'd be the yeah, one, one guy two, kicking three. to the wing. Yeah, well, double all, fist where Johnny got fist. the little, where Johnny dunked against Rutgers. Double fist, he rejected because yeah, that was the he, he went the opposite way. Yeah, one, yeah, two, three, yeah. double fist. And, and, and that's for what I real, remember. And that's one play is is for the one. So he's boom kicking it, going down, and coming off a single double, two play, same thing. Boom, coming off the single double, three play, same thing. Or you might have the cross screen where you get it in the mid post, and that was mm-hmm. that was special. Or you could have mixed it up however you want, or we did like a cross screen for the four or five sometimes to get yeah. uh, to get, and then sometimes a guy a flash eye. But bro, into that question, man, look, once we come off that down screen, it's time to boogie. You get it and make a decision. <laughs> you got a shot. You you go all the way off the curl, or you know, a lot of times if you didn't have it, you you kick it you kick it across, or you wait for that screen to come in. That, now you playing out of the pick and roll. Now you playing. Yeah, and how you play like That's it. It, 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 and and again going back to talking about these guys, dog. It's simple. You just got to be able to make those decisions. Like, all right, I got to open shot. Boom. All right, I got to pump fake in one dribble. You know what I'm saying? And then when you work on your skills, you know those those decisions, those reads become easier because now you're confident in it. You know what I'm saying? You having a little bit more yeah. confident. But it, it, until then, right now, until those skills come or you develop, man, be aggressive, yo. You, you got to be a good. That, that's one thing I know. We we all were Joe. Like talk, we were aggressive. Like coming off those plays, you got the best play in the world. But if you hesitant and you're not looking to attack off it, you're not going to create anything. You, you're exactly. not going to be able to have the de- defense collapse. You know when the defense collapse, you got to make that decision right there. A lob, drop, kick out, whatever it is. If if you're able to get by and you feel like you can finish, you got to finish or pull up. Whatever it is, man, you you you, you got to be ready to play. And, and you can't and be you hesitant know, in this in the game of basketball, yo. What's crazy, you can't be hesitant. When I think back to my time at Syracuse, bro, like, I obviously, you know, 1,000-plus points score, et cetera, et cetera, all that stuff. I, You know, I had some accolades when I was there, first team stuff, Big East Six Man of the Year stuff. But ultimately, when I look back, I'm like, damn, like, I, I was such a team. I'm, a, like, aggressive, but I'm a team guy at the same time. You know what I mean? So it was like I would rather make – the right play 
in certain situations as opposed to looking for my own shit because I always felt like I'm gonna get I'm this talent I'm skilled and talented enough where I'm gonna get my shit in the flow of the game like there was nothing I ever felt like I had to force but there is sometimes where I'm like shit you know was I aggressive as I could have been or whatever the case may be and you know there's sometimes where I look at a game it's because I was also very efficient you know and most times I could go because I'm getting to the line I'm gonna shoot six six free throws i'm gonna be seven for ten from the field maybe two for three from three or one you know what i'm saying so but being aggressive i just want to make sure that they don't get it misconstrued where aggressive means i'm gonna touch the ball and go every single time you know what i'm saying you still got to play within the construct of the team and within those parameters you know what i mean although we had some guys like you know someone who was ultra aggressive was a guy like Deion Waiters, but he was coming off the bench and, you know, he knew we need you to spark. So he was coming into the game looking for, for his opportunities and he was scoring the ball at a high rate. Shark off the bench. in the water. You Shark see what in I'm the saying? Water. He was smelling blood. As soon as he came yeah. in there, I smell blood. You know what I'm opportunity, saying? Opportunity. Yeah, a little crack. Opportunity. Little... Yep. Facts. Deion, great in transition, good spin move, but, um, Nah, bro. So I just want to make sure they understand that being aggressive doesn't mean shooting every ball. It means taking advantage of the opportunities where you can. Like if you see, you don't hesitate. Like you said, you come off a down screen or you come off a pin and you see your man, don't settle. You see your man is right there um, trailing. Don't stop and pull up for a three. Go ahead and go right into that basket, curl to the basket, get yourself into the paint, get you a layup, get to the free throw line. Make sure you know how to mix it up. Yeah, and bro, I think another guy, I think Benny Williams, man, he just has an impact on this team when he's engaged. We talked about him before. I mean, he's engaged. He's playing like he's capable of playing. I guess they were talking about last night on the broadcast. He always plays good against Pittsburgh. I mean, again, he played, what, 20 minutes, three for four, five rebounds, you know, seven points. But I think, you know, and then it was times we just saw uh, at the bottom of the screen, he, he, I think he played the five man for two minutes. You know what I'm saying? So when, when Peter Carey and – um, I think Hema was in for a little bit too, but uh, when mm-hmm. those guys Not got in long. foul trouble, uh, you know, he came in and played the five. So it's just showing his versatility. That's that versatility, bro. Yeah, and his willingness to, you know, do whatever. I mean, we know, bro, we, when you're engaged, when you're locked in, like you can have an impact. Like this team is 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 deep, man. They're they're versatile. There's a lot of depth. I mean, they played ten guys last night. Uh, I think when Benny's engaged, dude, is this a, is this a tournament team for you, Joe? Like it, when when they got all the guys clicking. I mean, we talked about this last 100%. night as well on the post game. I mean, I I, I, I think they so. are. I believe so. I, I I believe that we were so talented at really you know point guard super talented. We got JJ. He's talented. Um, you see Bell talented, you know what I'm saying? Justin Taylor has some, some talent and we got a good versatile big and, um, and Malik, when he starts at the five force, you look at the bench QC, he's talented. He could help us out. Benny, if he, if he keeps growing and keeps coming into his own, this, uh, role that he's playing and embracing it, you know, he's going to be special and help us out. And I think we're definitely a tournament team. We, you said we go 10, 10 deep. We can go 10 deep, right? But our main eight guys are are really good you know what i'm saying really good basketball players they're playing they're clicking at the right times and they're only going to get better despite uh the the the, the loss at um at, Car- uh, at north carolina you know we've been playing a good brand of basketball yes sometimes maybe there were certain things that looked a little sticky the ball was sticking it was stagnant but that's just a team trying to figure itself out a new coach a new player that's coming in off rip and starting in JJ, like tr- everything was happening at the same time. And we still found major success early on in the season. Right. So my belief is we're treading in the right direction. We've got a great coaching staff. We got players who seem to be willing and to learn and, and, and embrace a, a role that they've been given. And if you, that's all you need as a team is you leave the egos at the door, you play for one another, which I think they do. You know what I'm saying? You play for one another first and foremost, and you, you know, obviously you play for your coach, but really and truly, bro, you play for your teammates. That's who you spend the most of the time with. You know what I'm saying? That's who you really, you know, when you when you're done pr- practice, you're on South Campus. You you go eat together. You go di- dining halls together. That's who you play for. That's who you spend the most of your time with. You understand? You you know your teammates' background stories. You know what everybody's in it for. Everybody's trying to eat at the end of the day. I'm sh- I'm I'm sure those top eight guys want to make it to the league. 
on that team, top seven, whatever it may be. All them guys want to make it to the league and for sure want to make money playing the game, whether it's in overseas or wherever, right? So they're all trying to help each other out, reach those and accomplish those goals. And I think that once you understand what everybody wants out of this, they want to win. I'm sure everybody goes to college at the same, at the end of the day to compete for a national championship. They're a tournament team. They have the ability to compete. You know what I'm saying? We've seen it early on uh, when we played some teams in, in Maui. You know what I'm saying? We played Zaga. Uh, who was the other team? Tennessee, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, Tennessee, yeah. And, uh, you know, we've, we, we've we're competed, good. bro, with the, with the best of the best, right? And now it's the time where we're in conference play. Every game's going to be a dogfight. Nothing's going to be easy or given to us. And that's only going to help us prepare for the tournament. I'm sure we could get in there. We're going to keep getting some good wins, good road win against Pitt. We got some te- uh, games coming up where we got to make sure we win, protect home court. Definitely a tournament team, bro. How far can we go? It, it really depends on, you know, which which player shows up on any given night. Because if we all show up like we're supposed to, and if they all show up how I know they can and how you know they can, we'll be we'll be in great shape. And I think that this, these, this team is one of those teams where if they do get in the tournament, man, they can beat anybody. They're, they're one of those teams who, who has the talent and the depth to be able to compete and, and, you know, have the versatility. They could switch it up a little bit depending on who they play. You know, we didn't talk about uh, McLeod, you know, he, he having foot surgery. He's out for the season. So, and, and oh, I said shit. this yesterday too, I Joe. Uh, I missed that. Yeah, they just announced it yesterday. Red did. So okay. Naheem McLeod, the big seven foot four, he's out for the year. Um, which, I mean, I think it gives an opportunity for guys like Peter Carey and, you know, uh, Hema and, uh, you know, obviously Malik and, and just they'll switch the lineups and, and, you know, look at different ver- uh, varieties. But I, I think that it gives guys an opportunity to step in. Uh, and, and then, Joe, just to be real, like, you're not playing against a lot of teams, like, you know, besides North Carolina, maybe um, uh, Purdue with Zach Eady. It's not too many back to the basket guys like that anymore who are really, you know, playing that brand of basketball. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. it, and if it is, you're going to have to deal with it. Like, you're going to have to, you know, maybe, I don't know, zone up or, you know, send that help side over and then be able to drop the weak side to, to split the two. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that's just something you got to work on going forward. But but I think the brand of basketball that most teams are playing now is perimeter oriented. It's their big guys pop into the top and getting into the reversal and running into the pick and roll off that reversal. Reversal. So, yeah. and, and we're built for that, Joe. You know, we talk about Malik and Benny and Peter. Carey is a guy who has really hasn't played at all. But I think, uh, like we said, Joe, with more experience, and as these guys continue to get more game experience, he's going to get more comfortable. Like, right, look, Peter, we don't need you to score. You know what I'm saying? R- be a rim runner. Be active as, fu- as fuck. Communicate. You know what I mean? Talk on defense and, and be yeah. that guy that's always around the rim offensively, you know, getting those offensive rebounds, getting those tip outs, those deflections, and, and, and just bringing the energy and effort. Like, because he has it. He's athletic as fuck. I don't know if you've seen him no, before, but in practice. I, yeah, no, for sure. For sure. He my man is. windmilling that shit and all type of, you know what I mean? So he, that's what I'm I mean, saying. he's. he's well, do you think ahead. that, you know, look, granted, you never want to see one of your teammates go down with a foot injury, but. I'm sure at the end of the day, when you're not playing and you, you want to get in there and show what you can do, this gives you that opportunity. You never want it to come in the form of, ah, someone is hurt and out for the season. But this is basketball. This is sports. And it is what it is. This stuff does happen. And you do have to be prepared as a player to make sure you're always doing what you're supposed to do to be prepared for this opportunity. And a kid like Peter Carey, who I don't know much about, you probably see him more. You're, you know, you're more, um, you know, you're, you're in the cues, you know what I'm saying? So you probably got a chance to see him a lot more than I have, but I think of him and I think of a, um, what's my boy name? That was, that was our, our Jesse Edwards. You know what I'm saying? Really didn't play uh, too much initially. Yeah. But all he needed was an opportunity to go out there and, and boogie a little bit and see what it was. And Immediately, he was able to adapt and, and, and get much better. You know what I mean? And then, of course, uh, what was it, two seasons ago where he was really hitting his stride. He broke his wrist, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, and you, t- I'm asking you this. Do you see something like that in, in Peter Carey where he could come in? You said he has the athletic ability. He looks like he could get up and down really well. He runs well. Now it's just the experience that he needs to be able to contribute, right? Do you feel like with that, you know, what is he, 6, 10, 11, something like that? Yeah, yeah. 6, you know 10, I mean? 11, 
pogo stick I, and bro I, I think so i mean the stage is set for him as far as like his potential and potential is a obviously it's a tough word bro right but like he has it in him like as far as what we need the tools that we need from that position you can run you can move you could you, you could be active now yeah it's just about being confident in itself and now you got to be in the gym young fella like for real you should have been before because because like you said we don't want to and bro we've seen this in every sport where a motherfucker get hurt Tom Brady, Vinny Next Tom, Brady. Man Tom Brady came in, motherfucker never gave that shit back. Peter Carey, mm -hmm. I'm just letting you know, bro. Like the opportunity is there for you to really take advantage of. We've seen it with baseball players where a guy comes in, and then the, the, the difference between those guys and Peter, we, 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 you're gonna get more opportunities for sure. We're not saying that this is you, but those guys were fucking ready, yo. Like those guys never, regardless when they didn't play. And when they knew they weren't going to play, man, they stayed doing the same type of shit and even more than the guys who mm -hmm. are playing. So now when that does happen and when the unfortunate injury does occur, man, they step it right in and they ready to go and ain't missing a beat. Show your value. And a lot of times getting fucking better. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's, that's how you have great teams because like everyone is always going to make sure that they're backing each other or they're that, that if some, you know, one guy goes down, the other one is ready. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, exactly. that's a culture that you, that you, that you create, you know what I'm saying? As a, as a coach, because those guys who aren't playing a lot, they got to be engaged too. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Even when you're not playing, Facts. you helping Facts. me, the guys who are playing. And then if like we talk about something happened, man, you got to be ready to come in. We need you to know like yeah. this, this, this guy needs to be here. This is what I need to do. This is what I, how I got to talk to him. The opportunity for you, Mr. Carey, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and him, I know he's been hurt, <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, just, just, to, and he looked like Jim Carey too, yo. He, he looked like Jim Carey, yo. I'm just saying, I mean, that's, he's a good kid, but he looked like Jim Carey, yo. But he, Jim Carey, a motherfucker, that's a funny motherfucker. He is. But, he is, but for he real. Is. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shout out Jim Carrey in your home country, Canada. You know what I mean? Fucking yeah. up, right? He from Toronto. He from one of them fucking places for sure. Yeah. Van but, maybe but Peter, Vancouver, bro. somewhere in Ontario. Yeah. Yeah, he, he out there. But, but you know, uh, Peter, you got an opportunity, man, to step in and and really take advantage of an opportunity, bro. Like, again, I think that's where the game is already as far as those athletic guys picking pot, running to the screens, get out. Um, so yeah, Mr. Carey, what we got right here? Did you guys ever have players only me? Yes. Man, I'm going to tell you right now. Yes. And I, and I tell you my freshman year and I, I you, you remember T Rob, you know, T Terrence Roberts. Uh, yes, sir. This is, I still want to get T Rob on the show. Matter of fact, I want to get him on here. Man, man. We but, yeah, shout out T Rob. When, when, I, when I say stories. Terrence Roberts, oh dog, and not only do I on and off the court, but he was a guy that was so talented, yo. Like, one of the most talented dudes that came through Syracuse as far as athletic, raw, yo, Kenyon Martin, like, on the... Kenyon you know, Martin, more, bro. More, but more athletic, fierce, like, super competitive. Like, dog, he, he had that shit in him. It's just sometimes he, you know, he couldn't control it all the way on the court. But, bro, he was a... I thought he had a fantastic career as far as yep. go, playing through the injuries and shit like that. But one time, my freshman year, he I remember we called one, and it was, I think we got in uh, Ross Delegro, his apartment. And this was on South Campus. Ross was a walk-on. We all got there together. And, you know, it's people just, it's, it's, it's guys just being real, man. Like, it's guys being real with each other. Like, yo, fuck what coach is talking about. You know, reg you know how that go. That's You always go yeah, start no, with facts. that. Yo, fuck what coach talking about. <laughs> fuck what they say. We got to do it for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, and, and that's what it was. Just, like, guys getting shit off their chest. Like, if you had, you know, uh, some shit going on with another – Man, this was the place to say it, man, and, and get it off. Because at the end of the day, you we, you might not like each other, but man, when we get on this fucking floor, we got to work together. We need one uh, another, bro. I, I think those are uh, uh, necessary. Those those type meetings, like maybe of one course. or two a season, just check in with everybody. Yo, I know it's a long fucking season. Uh, you know, I know guys are doing their thing, and sometimes you know their mind ain't it. Let's check back in with each other. Make sure we good. This is us. Like we we got to be. Because, bro, the coach can only say so much, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like you said, Joe, you, you guys are spending the most time together. These are your guys. The coaches are going home to their, to their families. 
You yep. know what I'm saying? But you, these are your guys right here. So to be able to check in with each other, when you have a, 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 a group that understands each other, and, and I, I would say, I'm not saying y'all got to hang out together all the time because we had our, our a couple guys that motherfuckers hung For out sure. with. You know what I'm saying? That's just, that's just how it was. But having that understanding, bro, be able to check in with guys. Because we, like you said, we got a common goal. We're trying to go somewhere with it. We're trying to win a national championship. You got to have these player only meetings. I, I, I think they're those are necessary. You know what I'm saying? They're productive. Check bro. in, check they're in with productive. guys. They're productive. Yeah, if ran right, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, facts. You know, there's been some where, you know, guys get to point the finger sometimes and shit like that, where you got to. And it depends who your leaders are, too. Your leaders, you know, they're going to be the ones who, who mediate the shit for real, for real. Um, but. You know, you got to reel guys back in sometimes. Like, you're you doing too much or you, you know what I'm saying, we got to do this better. And my biggest thing is, and it's tough as a young man, teenager, whatever it is, it's probably hard to get, a lot harder to be criticized or feel like you're being attacked, even if it's in a good, in, in good spirit or in good, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like you're not trying yeah. to, and, and, and now you might respond a different type of way because, though, like, fuck you mean it's my fault that XYZ happened or... I'm the one causing X, Y, Z, but it's not like that. If you're able to have a leader who and players who understand, listen, we have a common goal, bro. At the end of the day, like you said, fuck what coach talking about. We got nine months or whatever it is, four months left, five months left in the season. Let's do everything we can to help one another out and get to our common goal. We all got to, we all individually have a goal, right? We're all trying to get to the league, get paid on this team. Collectively, we're trying to win as many games as we can, go to the tournament there's always goals that are set in place so the best way to do it is together you know what i'm saying like i forget the i forget the saying is some shit like if you want to go fast go alone but if you want to go far or some shit like do it together you yeah, know what nah, i'm saying it's the same yeah. one of them it's mm -hmm. one of them shits right and jordan look that, that shit up coming. baby look that shit up for <laughs> next time we're gonna we go start you know it off I mean? it, yeah no that's and that's what it is you playing a team sport you need one another you know, get through tough times, the good times, the bad times, and shit. Them team meetings are, are definitely a, a good thing. Like you said, if ran right. And, and, and Joe, this is random right here. This is off topic, but I think this is what we need to do. And Jordan, listen to what, what I got going on right here. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to have to every every Wednesday, maybe at the end of the show, we do like a, uh, we got to do like a soulful session. You know what I'm saying? So we'll, we'll have like a song that we, that we all pick out or, or, you know what I'm saying? That we agree upon at the end of, you know, the last two to three minutes. And we you let that shit play for a second. And we talk, it, it gotta be some really like, you know, some, some good, some soulful shit. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Okay. So soulful, soulful Wednesday. Let's like soulful session. And you know what? For the chat, we want you to come in and, and, and write in the chat, bring us some of your soulful shit. And then you could get it played at the end, you know, end of the show, the two to three minutes, just something we want to change up. It's because it, you know what, Joe, I want to end every show on a positive note and I want to make sure wh whoever is listening, I want to make Feel sure they, they end the show feeling good and, and happy about yeah, the rest sir. of the day. I, I want to set that tone. If you start the morning with us, you got to end it with a good, uh, on a good foot, on a good foot, baby. No question. You know no saying? question. So, so I, you I think, you know, the last world, smiling and fucking, all type of shit. Yep. Love it. I, I got a couple, man. We'll, we'll start next week, but I got a couple already. It's so soulful Wednesday. And at the end of the Devo and Chris Joe show, we get into the soulful session. And then we just, you know what I'm saying? And then, and then, and then we'll let we'll, that uh, thing play. Let, let that, that thing play song. for a little bit. And then, and then, yeah, yeah, shit. Put the name, put the name and the artist up right there. Jordan will make sure that's done. So you could go ahead. If you feel it, if you fucking with it, I'm sure everybody got a little Spotify or Apple music or shit, YouTube. And you could go ahead and listen to that and, and, and have it part of your little uh, song selection for sure. I like that. So that's, I, that's, I remember that's with Paulie. We, that, what did we do with Paulie? We, with Paulie, we used to we used to do DJ Paulie Fridays or some shit. He used to come yeah, in yeah, and play Paul. some like Run so, DMC yeah. and shit. You know what I mean? Soulful, soulful session at the end. It's stamped and it's approved. And yeah, you know I mean, you two guys, we gonna make that happen. So at the end of every, you know, starting next Wednesday, we are gonna have our soulful session, y'all. Chat. We need y'all to be engaged. Be you know, send us your soulful songs, whatever it is. Gavendo, I know you got some, you know what I mean? I, it might be Barry White. I don't know. I, I yeah, mean, yeah. we got a lot going on. I, Shout I got out a to lot Vendo. going through my head. And that, then that, uh, that, also that before, flag never made it here, Maddie. That man, 
Come on, man. I suppose it, it, hey, I know, I, it was something supposed to be sent out. I'm still waiting, but I appreciate you. Hey guys, real quick, I want to, I too, I want to shout out our, our sponsor, Flintstone. Uh, man, they've been with us since the beginning of this season. Uh, they've been a tremendous you, support. Appreciate you, my guy Mike, uh, and his wife Angela, great people. Um, if you haven't, go check yourself out right on Walton as you go down. <laughs> it, it, it's going to be on that right hand side. You're going to see the door. They got the crazy doors. It will hop right in there. It'll be a cold day if you hey, want to go ahead and bundle up. You know what I'm saying? Do you Flintstone, see, you see the right chat? there. What did it say? Flintstone got me through the UNC game. <laughs> there you go. That's all we. <laughs> hey, look, that's all we doing, man. We just trying to help out our sponsor, man, and and uh, support. Yeah, K Rock. I know K Rock. They visit there frequently, man. Come on, man. A, they they right down the block, man. So they in there. But yeah, Joe. So we that's what we on, man. We 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 got right, the soul for wins. Like, you with it? I mean, is it a good I'm with idea? It. I'm with it. You know, I'm, you know me, bro. I'm I'm in the car. I'm listening to 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 goddamn all type of shit, all type of Motown music, and uh, I'm with it. You know what I'm saying? So. We, and Jordan, I mean, I just want to make sure you with it too. I want to, yeah, Flintstone Cannabis Company. Check it out, two one nine Walton Street. That's. That's a fact, man. And we appreciate Labatt, too. We got all the... We got the, Labatt, the green. Labatt we got music. the... Uh, Labatt. The, the, the I mean, that's just how it goes right now, man. We we, we, we showing love, man. They showing love to the hey, show. So they looking... They want they want motherfuckers to have a great time. They want you to go grab your case and some Labatt, and they want you to go ahead and grab you some Flintstone. That's a recipe that's it, for a great, great time. Yeah, just sit your butt down. You're going to be that's happy. It. Yeah, just sit down. Sit down. Watch the game. Turn on something, net, whatever you got to do. Listen to some music. Be creative. Let your let your artist artistic juices flow. You know what I'm saying? Like, Come on, whatever. Shout hey, Joe, before we get that. up out of here, before we get up out of here, we got a couple minutes left. Uh, we got Syracuse, obviously coming off a great road win last night against Pittsburgh. Going into a quick turnaround Saturday as they play a really good Miami team coming into the dome. I will be in attendance. Um, I, you know, I got some special stuff going on at halftime where the athletes, um, I think athletes is care or something like that. They're, uh, and sorry if don't be mad at me if I got it wrong. They're actually presenting my foundation, uh, $10,000 check at halftime with, with coach Fran Brown, um, mm -hmm. the football coach. So I'm excited about that, but I'm, I'm excited, you know, to get in there with the fam, my family coming down, um, my mom, sister, brother-in-law, niece, nephew. So I'm excited Amazing. to get to the game. And and what's your what's your take, man? What what do we got to do going into Saturday for those guys to keep this going? Have a great week of practice. Get in the gym. You know what I'm saying. Do your get your make sure you get your work done. But more importantly, when that game day does come around and we're playing Miami, who's tough, we got to make sure we're protecting home court. That's always first and foremost. But play within yourselves. I'm a big 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 believer in watching film. Watch not to see what you did wrong, but to see what you did right. Where did you find success? You know what I mean? Like, where could you find your spots? This gives you an opportunity to speak to your teammates, your point guard, whoever it is, your coaches. You know, gather all the information that you can to be successful. Um, our guys, they need to make shots. Obviously, Judah, I don't see him going three for 13 again. So he's going to be in his bag. And just understanding that he can also facilitate. He's seen how he can facilitate. Score that ball. Do a little bit of both. Um, but make shots and compete, man. At the end of the day, compete, protect home court and compete. We should be straight. Again, we have the team. We have a, a team that could really do some damage in March, and we got to start showing it right now. That's a fact. Chris Bell, Justin Taylor, we need y'all, man. We need y'all to keep yep. doing that, man. I'm telling you, that's it right there. That's it. JJ, 10 plus shots a game. My guy, Joe, you know, it's always a pleasure every Wednesday, it's baby. It's a pleasure, that, my brother. And we'll be back next week. And until then, <laughs> We out of here.